Hey guys, Dr. Yo from ECA Wellness. So this week was the opening week of the 2019 NFL season. I'm sure some of you guys have drafted your fantasy football teams. Some of you might have also gotten Sunday afternoon tickets to see the games this season, or maybe even bought a new jersey to root for your favorite team. But while those violent hits and tackling can be exciting for the fans, the toll it takes on the players mentally and physically can be devastating and potentially life-threatening. Over the past few years, the spotlight has been on the correlation between head trauma and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE. But there's also been a keen interest in how to effectively manage pain in professional athletes, especially football players. With the opioid crisis in the U.S. skyrocketing, many professional athletes have turned to non-opioid pain medications, and one of the commonly used medications is Toradol, which is also known as vitamin T. Toradol has been the choice for many NFL players and team physicians for over two decades because of how effectively and quickly it works in managing pain. But just like any medications, Toradol has side effects that form the core of its controversy. So in this episode of Feature Friday, I'm going to be going over Toradol, its uses, benefits, side effects, and controversies. So stay tuned and I'll dive in. is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory pain medication that is similar but more potent than aspirin and ibuprofen. It was developed by Syntex in the 1970s by the chemists Joseph Machowski and Richard Greenhouse and was FDA approved in 1989 for moderate to severe post-operative pain management. Toradol is still used daily in operating rooms and hospitals all over the U.S. after surgery and minor procedures. It is a very popular medication in anesthesia because it has no addictive properties and respiratory problems and is just as potent as morphine. I routinely use Toradol as part of my anesthetic plan in managing the pain of my patients, especially ones undergoing laparoscopic or orthopedic procedures like knee scopes. Because Toradol is not considered an opioid, it's not a controlled substance, and along with its non-addictive properties, it has created a false sense of safety. Toradol works by inhibiting the chemical prostaglandin to decrease the pain associated with inflammation. It usually starts working within 10 to 15 minutes and can last for 6 hours. Toradol can be administered orally, intravenously, intramuscularly, intranasally, and via eye drops. The recommended dose for IV Toradol is 15 to 30 milligrams every 6 hours, with a maximum daily dose not to exceed 120 milligrams. The FDA has a black box warning to not take Toradol for more than 5 straight days because of increased risk of side effects. But what are these side effects? Well, the most notable ones would be heart attack and stroke, liver and kidney failure, GI ulcers, and excessive bleeding due to the inhibition of platelets. The inability of your body to stop bleeding is a major concern for anyone involved in contact sports such as football because you have an increased risk of organ and brain bleeds. But why has the use of Toradol become very controversial in sports and the NFL? See, Toradol was initially developed as a post-operative pain medication in the late 1980s, but by the mid-1990s, it was routinely used by NFL team physicians and trainers to not only treat game day pain, but to prophylactically treat future pain the players would feel. See, that's the reason we feel pain. It is the first indication that something is wrong. So when we mask it, you allow yourself to worsen an injury. A 2002 paper surveyed 30 NFL teams and 28 said they used Toradol overwhelmingly on game days. Another NFL survey in 2014 noted that on average 27 players per team took at least one dose of Toradol per game. 
Many NFL players said after they got a shot of Toradol on game day, they felt younger and newer again and they could go out and perform at their peak levels. The pressure of performing at a high level in professional football led many team front offices and team physicians to turn to Toradol as a solution. In 2012, the NFL Physician Society published the findings of a task force that recommended that Toradol be administered under the direct supervision of the team physicians and limited to players only on the injury report. The task force also was concerned about the increased risk of internal bleeding with playing football and the use of Toradol. But recently, there have been many lawsuits filed by former NFL players who claimed that the routine use of Toradol during their playing days contributed to them developing kidney failure and many life-threatening side effects. They also claimed that the NFL team physicians and trainers never told them about these risks and side effects that have now put their health and lives in danger. In a league where the average career is only 2.66 years, the pressure to perform at a high level has led many of these players to turn to medications and in some instances ban substances. While the use of Toradol is now more closely regulated by the NFL, it is still used by players and administered by team physicians, and more vigilance and care must be taken to ensure the long-term health of these players. If you take any sort of medications, my recommendation is to first review the FDA black box warning and side effects with your physician. All medications have side effects and risks, and it is important that you are aware of them before starting treatment. The FDA has a website where you can get more information on the black box warnings and side effects, and I will post a link to that website down in the description section of this video. So if you guys have any questions related to pain management or the use of Toradol, send me a message down below in the comment section or on Instagram at ECA Wellness. And if you're liking this video and feature Friday, hit that like button, click the bell so you get notifications when I put out a new video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next Friday, ciao!